Okay, it's been a few days since we've uh, done any Oscar coverage. Um, a little over a week here since the uh, nominations are out. Ten days, actually. And, uh, yeah, I've been kind of uh, looking for some time here this week to go ahead and uh, obviously give an update on some stuff here because uh, we've seen uh, Producers Guild and the Writers Guild uh, hand out their wins. Um, for those of you who need to catch up, that's um, uh, for the WGAs, the top two prizes are Adapted and Original Screenplays, of course. Adapted went to Bull Rat, which was a genuine surprise, and Original went to Promising Young Woman. Uh, that one, more or less, I wouldn't say 100% had it locked up, but I think in the recent days, we've kind of, after the um, Critics' Choice win, I think a few people have been leaning more in that direction, myself included. Um, and then, of course, we had PGA come out on... Um, I forget, was that Tuesday night or last night? I think it was last night. Um, whatever night it was. <laughs> Some of the days kind of blend together anymore. Um, and uh, Nomadland was the winner there. I, I was going with a little bit of an upset in my prediction there. I was thinking, no, or, sorry, not Nomadland. Uh, uh, Minari might just pull it off. Um and I think um, a few people have been starting to write some pieces, of course, over the last uh, 24 hours, uh, if not a little because I'm thinking it was last night. It was PGA. I can't even remember anymore. But, um, yeah, tons and tons of think pieces are out there today uh, or yesterday, whatever, about, you know, now it's Nomad Land 100%. And I'm like, oh, I, I'm, I'm a little wary of that because, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff to think about now for, okay, is it Nomad Lands to lose? I think... It absolutely is now. I think I, I have it to win now. I had Minari out front after the nominations and stuff. Even though it's missing that editing nomination, I was like, you know what? It's got a couple of acting nominations. It's got director. It's got screenplay. It's got everything else that it really needs. Uh, it even got a score nomination. So uh, it does have some technical support as well. Um, so I was like, yeah, I think Minari still has a decent shot at it. But um, and then Chicago 7, again, I wouldn't say it's out 100%. You know, it could rally if it wins screenplay and picture, kind of pull a spotlight in that way. But one thing I didn't really think about, um, obviously this is kind of a, an exceptional year, of course, but I was like the Netflix factor. I didn't even think about that. Um, because obviously The Irishman and uh, Marriage Story last year struggled in Best Picture, um, you know, for differing reasons, of course. Um and, uh, you know, Roma couldn't quite pull it off for Best Picture a couple of years before that, or a couple of years ago now. So, um, so yeah, now it's a question of, okay, you know, Nomadland, even though it's on Hulu, whatever, it was uh, mainly distributed through Searchlight, so that technically counts as a theatrical release, and Minari was through A24. Again, I think they have, they have something with streaming, or the streamers got out or whatever, but it's still mainly a theatrical release. So if they go with either one of those two, you know, you'll continue to see that uh, record hold up where they haven't given it to a streaming film yet. Um, and I guess that would technically be true if, uh, just for an example here, The Father or Judas and the Black Messiah or Promising Young Woman win, because um, they also released mainly theatrically. You can, again, you can find Judas and the Black Messiah on HBO Plus or, or HBO Max, whatever. Uh, you can find, um, I think Promising Young Woman, it'll be out on disc soon, but, uh, but still, when it was released, it was only theatrical for that one, I know. And then, uh, The Father, I know, has been very strictly theatrical for Sony Pictures Classics. So, um, with that all being said, um, yeah, I did switch in Best Picture to Nomadland, but again, I'm really, really not ready to say that this is a done deal yet, because at this point... Five years ago, <laughs> we were all thinking, or four years ago, whatever the math equals out to there, uh, four years ago, we were all thinking La La Land was in this same shape. It had won PGA, it had won at Critics' Choice, it had won at the Globes, it even swept the Globes. So we were all thinking, you know, it's, it's good to go. Um, the one place that La La Land slipped up, or, you know, didn't win the top prize, was WGA. Just so happened this year, for different reasons, Nomad Land did not win there. Obviously, it was ineligible this time. Uh, at least La La Land was nominated that year. And uh, looky, looky, it lost to Moonlight there. La La Land did that year. So, um, interesting there. But, uh, obviously, Bull Rat is not a Best Picture nominee. Uh, One Night in Miami, which was also a pretty high front runner there. I had no, uh, One Night in Miami winning there uh, on Sunday. Uh, that one is not up for, for picture. Um, actually, I don't think any of the five were up for picture, um, if I remember right. Because um, the other one was News of the World. Sorry, was News of the World in there? Or was it... Um, I, I know Ma Rainey's got in. That one didn't get in for picture. But um, unless... Because uh, the father was ineligible. Yeah, I think that was all of them, right? Yeah, because yeah, none of them were up for picture then. Okay. Um, so that's an easy way out. 
But uh, but still, I think that adapted screenplay prize. We'll talk about it too. But um, yeah, that one I think is still a at least a two way race between the father and Nomadland. We'll see where it goes uh, down the road here. But uh, but still. Um, yeah, it, it is going to be a big question of, okay, are Oscar voters, you know, going to get sick of seeing Nomadland win everything again? Because that's arguably one of the bigger reasons why La La Land won uh, that year, uh, or at least what might have pushed it over the edge. Because there's definitely arguments that year of, okay, it was an election year, people didn't like the outcome if they're out on the liberal West Coast or whatever, if that's your uh, finding there, at least part of the reasoning there. So they're like, okay, we, you know, uh, protest vote, we're voting for the, the film that's more, you know liberal leaning the film that's uh, about a gay black man and stuff you know th told through time and everything obviously the film had a lot of passion so there were definitely you know s straight number one votes that went for it maybe even more passionate votes for that that one uh, than for la la land even possibly um and stuff like that there's again there's a lot of factors that that helped take la la land down that year um but definitely there was backlash and a lot of um not backlash as far as like people saying it's a bad movie or anything but definitely you know people that were underwhelmed by it and stuff um, and obviously, since we have a pretty virtual year this year um, and everything, we we can't really judge that right now. We can't judge that with Nomadland as far as common audiences go, and then by extension, possibly what Oscar voters are also feeling. Um, I know for myself, Nomadland, it's, uh, it's number two on my list for what I've seen this year, uh, with Minari being number one. Um, and I definitely, you know, think that for the, the common viewers out there, the ones that only see, you know, five, maybe six movies a year that are brand new... Um, no Man Land is probably going to be more like La La Land in the way of, you know, people that hear about it being hyped up and they get all excited about it and it's, you know, the best picture front runner and all that stuff. And if they sit down to watch it, they might really be tempted to turn it off after the first, you know, 20 minutes or so just because it is such a kind of slow burn, you know, uh, character study type film. And, uh, you know, for myself, yeah, I, I, you know, definitely got some senses of that early on. But again, as as time has, has gone on here, the more I think about it, it's like, yeah, I really think about just the, the stuff that really does stand out, which is, you know, there's quite a few great, great scenes in the back half of the picture that are so, so good. Uh, and, and, you know, particularly the, the Bob Wells scene, I always say, is like probably one of the more moving scenes I've seen all year. Um, definitely. His little mini monologue there. Um, so, um, yeah, so I think it's, it's going to be really hard to judge because, um, again, La La Land, you know, that year... Pretty much everything except WGA, it was like a winner at. I mean, not you know, and that's discounting all the like the the supporting guilds, you know, the technical guilds like cinematographer, all that stuff. And even then, you know, we saw La La Land win, you know, or at least get a prize out of uh, most of those, if not all of those. Um, but yeah, like PGA, DGA, uh, C uh, Screen Actors Guild is the only other one that uh, that La La Land it wasn't even nominated for, which again we all took for granted that year. Um, but might have also been partially a sign that the the acting branch, you know, wasn't a hundred percent behind it. Um, in this case, Nomadland also has that trapping where it's not nominated at SAG this year. Um, so um, yeah, and of course, you know, the argument I think people made for La La Land at the time was, oh, it's really just a two person ensemble. And in the same way, Nomadland, you know, it is mainly Francis McDormand, and then you got a whole bunch of uh, actors that are, you know, non-professional actors and stuff. So definitely we can see why it wasn't included there. So that definitely, you know, films like Minari, Chicago 7, um, and uh, those are the only two, right, that are up at uh, Screen Actors Guild that are also up for picture. Because I think the other three missed, yeah. Defy Bloods, Ma Rainey's One Night in Miami, yeah, they all missed for picture. Um and I think between those two, I still say Trial of Chicago 7 wins at SAG, but it's really tempting to say Minari has a, uh, could pull it off. I mean, it's very possible. Um, I'm trying to think the last time... Um, I'm going to look this up here just to see, because, you know, especially lately, the Screen Actors Guild um, Ensemble Prize has gone to a Best Picture winner. Um, because, uh, you know, in, in the old years, you know, you'd have... a bunch of films you know you can cite that weren't even nominated for best picture um you know like uh we're gonna go through them here i'm gonna find one eventually <laughs> um uh let's see here uh this is going back really early yeah this is back to the 90s even uh birdcage yeah that's actually that's the only one isn't it yeah okay i, I forget this, <laughs> this show has not been around yeah the birdcage is like the only one that's one uh ensemble that has not been up for best picture uh, at least nominated. They don't obviously they don't always cross over, but um, but still worth mentioning there. Um, 
And uh, Chicago 7 does have a decent sized cast in it that would, you know, in a normal year get on stage and all be up there, of course. Uh, Defy Bloods, I think, has the biggest cast, if I'm just looking at the, the numbers here at least. Uh, One Night in Miami, decent sized cast, but the cast for Ma Rainey's and Minari are actually a little bit smaller. You've only got seven listed for Minari and uh, six listed for Ma Rainey's. Um, so, you know, sometimes I think that does impact the voting at least a little bit, but uh, yeah, I would say, yeah, it's, it's really just, okay, are, are the passion votes there for Minari? I think the sense, you know, if we're going to get that sense, I think it's going to be, um, uh, it's going to be at the Screen Actors Guild if it, if it wins there. Because uh, it's not up for film at BAFTA. Uh, it's not, um, yeah, it's missing a few categories over there. But yeah, picture being one of them, of course, it didn't make the long list. Um, you know, uh, it wasn't el eligible at WGA. You know, can it pull off maybe a surprise win at one of these guilds? You know, can it win, like, for example, I know it's up at... Uh, uh, the Editing Guild, uh, is it up for, you know, the Cinematographers Guild, I think it got into. So, you know, if it can pull off some of these wins and show passion, you know, the way that the WGA, you know, win for Moonlight showed passion, and then the way, uh, it, Moonlight did not win SAG that year, that actually went to Hidden Figures, but, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, we'll see, you know, how that one goes down, because it's obviously not going to directly correlate here, because Chicago 7 is up for picture, uh, if that one happens to win SAG, and, uh, yeah, that's that's kind of a question mark right now too. So, yeah, I don't know. It, it, I'll, I'll kind of I mean, we got a little bit of time here before SAG, about another week, a little over a week before SAG. So um, I'll kind of lock in my predictions there. As far as the, uh, we'll, we'll talk about predictions there for the winners probably just in another video when we get closer to SAG. But um, but yeah, do I think it's probably these three for picture? Probably. I mean. Um, I mean, uh, some people have been talking about possibly a uh, promising young woman getting on a track to win Best Picture, and that's really lining up with the idea, okay, it can win screenplay. I think a lot of people are now putting it ahead for screenplay, including myself. Uh, it can win an acting prize, which is Best Actress for Carrie Mulligan, and it can win, you know, it can then, you know, kind of go on like a Green Book or a Moonlight track there where it wins an acting award, screenplay award, and picture. So... Um, Obviously, that's been kind of trendy lately, you know, uh, other than um, Shape of Water and The Artist. In the last 10 years, we haven't seen any Best Picture winners not pick up their screenplay prize, uh, which, again, would, you know, if you're thinking Nomadland, that would suggest, yep, that's going to win screenplay. Um, and I do have that one ahead right now, by the way, but I think The Father is really close at number two. Um, and then, yeah, even for original screenplay, I think I have Minari in second place with that, you know, caveat that, yeah, if it does end up being our Best Picture winner, I think the first sign of that is if screenplay goes with Minari over Promising Young Woman, over Chicago 7 and stuff. So, yeah, I do have Aaron Sorkin in third place, and that's, you know, he has won before. He could easily win again here, too, you know, just on the strength of the film, because uh, it does it does have one more nomination, if I'm remembering correctly, than Promising Young Woman does, but... Uh, I don't know, that's, that's kind of tough there, you know, because a ton, you know, like last year, for example, Jojo Rabbit won Adapted Screenplay, and that did not have as many nominations as, like, Joker or Irishman and stuff, so um, sometimes having the more nominations doesn't always mean you uh, are the, the clear winner there. Um, so I think it's it's a very slight possibility. I would put it at maybe, like, the 10% range right now, at least. Um, if Promising Young Woman, like, all of a sudden wins BAFTA or something, or if... Uh, Carrie Mulligan wins SAG, you know, uh, which I think she will. But, uh, you know, if uh, we see a big, big spring of passion for the movie all of a sudden, uh, and it does, you know, for example, win like the... It, it's likely to win the comedy musical editing prize at Ace Eddie, for example, at one of these guilds. But, uh, you know, if it does overperform a BAFTA and stuff, like Emerald all of a sudden wins for director or something over there. Or no, she's not even nominated, sorry. <laughs> she wins for screenplay, picture, uh, actress, and then um, maybe one... Or no, it's not even nominated actress. God, I keep forgetting that. <laughs> it was all a bad dream, right? <laughs> BAFTA nominations. It was all a bad dream. <laughs> There's no place like home, Annie. <laughs> uh, you were there and you were there and yeah, all that stuff. Okay, you get what I mean. I'm overplaying it. So, um, yeah, I mean, if it does, you know, even though it underperformed by my estimates on nomination stuff, if it all of a sudden comes back strong at BAFTA, okay, then it's it's a little more likely there. But uh, no, I don't really see that happening right now. And then the only other one I think that got, uh, or two possibly, that got a little bit of a boost after their nominations and stuff at the Oscars would be Judas and the Black Messiah and Sound of Metal. But again, both are missing director. 
Uh, they're both in for screenplay, but they're both also missing, uh, or uh, Judas is missing editing, but Sound of Metal's in for editing. Um, otherwise, they both have a couple of acting nominations and stuff. So um, if there's like a super weird, you know, the preferential ballot all of a sudden gets divided so many ways, you know, there could be an, uh, an odd winner like that, but I, I just don't, I just don't see it happening. Especially, again, they're both missing like SAG Ensemble nominations, uh, you know, uh, stuff like that. So, yeah. Okay, so I feel like that's best picture right now. It's like it's probably Nomad Land right now, and again, we'll have to watch for that trap if it if it is kind of um, you know uh, uh, La La Land all over again. Uh, the only other thing I was going to say though that might help Minari, of course, um, but I'm I'm not really sure if it's a, a huge you know winning argument right now. Is um, of course you know last week the Atlanta shooting. You know we had so many of the victims were Asian Americans, you know, I thought, well, you know, there might be a little bit of a boost there for the film all of a sudden. If it's like, if more interest in the film comes up from that, if it's, you know, more media attention, more people saying, look, you know, this just happened, you know, and we're all feeling, you know, really uh, badly about the situation. Obviously through the year, we've seen a lot of reports of, you know, Asian Americans under attack, uh, you know, from just regular, you know, citizens out there and stuff, uh, obviously, you know, unfairly and stuff. Uh, for, I would say, 99% of the situations, you know. But uh, the 1% being if, if they, like, stole somebody's car or something, you know. Obviously, we don't know, but uh, every everybody's different there. But, uh, but yeah, it's like if there was all of a sudden going to be a groundswell of, you know, in the best picture race, if so many Oscar voters are like, well, let's, you know, even though we just gave Parasite, which is a film, you know, from Asia last year, we just gave that best picture. Uh, I don't know, Minari I liked a lot, so I'm going to put that as, like, number one, or I'll put that as number two. And I'll put Nomad Land. Well, I, I like that one enough. That's like a five for me. I like, you know, Chicago Seven was more for me. The Father was more for me. You know, they name all the other ones on their uh, rankings. There, it's possible that that could happen. But um, and obviously, it's you know, if we see that media coverage, you know, and stuff, if that uh, uh, topic of discussion really does continue through uh, the coming weeks here as we get into Oscar voting, um, it's you know, it could it's, it could be a narrative that takes off, but. The thing that I think cuts against that a little bit is, you know, you really had uh, a strong, strong sense after the January 6th stuff. You know, there were a lot of people that turned to trial the Chicago 7 and said, wow, this looks even more, you know, politically relevant, you know, today uh, after everything that happened there. So, you know, that one I felt like definitely got a boost there at that time. And that's when, you know, a lot of people like myself started putting it ahead for picture at, at the Oscars and, and at the Globes and all these other uh, award shows and stuff. And, you know, it didn't, it didn't happen. You know, it really, you know, it kind of fell short and it didn't even land the director nomination and stuff. So, I mean, it's sometimes those narratives really do not take off. You know, uh, there's a couple, God, I can't even remember. It's like, there's a couple, I remember there was one narrative a couple, a few years ago with uh, Shape of Water where uh, there was like a, a suit that went out against Del Toro and, and Vanessa Taylor. And um, I think just, yeah, just those two were writers on the film, if I remember right. Uh, about plagiarism and stuff and i was like ooh, you know i was thinking <laughs> i was still thinking in my pea brain that you know uh, three billboards was going to win so i'm like ooh, you know the writers branch they really get sensitive about a lot of issues especially with plagiarism and and stuff like that so i'm like what if that really does hurt you know the that particular branch in voting for it you know lower and lower on their best picture list and stuff and it's like eh, clearly it didn't affect it enough you know if it was anything that even registered for them so yeah anyway so um yeah, but after yeah, I mean it's it's hard to argue though right now for Nomad Land though that it's it's not at least the front runner you know or the projected front runner after it wins Globe Critics Choice PGA uh, likely very 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 likely to win DGA uh, and I think ext uh, not extremely extremely but definitely uh, very high highly favorable to win uh, BAFTA as well um, yeah so we'll have to uh, We'll have to just uh, wait a little bit longer and see what happens at uh, SAG to see where, where they turn. If they go with something like Chicago 7, um, I think, you know, that might get a little bit of a boop. Uh, a, a boop, sorry. <laughs> Betty boop, no. It, it gets a little bit of a bump, a little bit of a boost for uh, Chicago 7 as far as Best Picture goes. And maybe then it becomes, you know, kind of... A lot of people might start bumping it up to number two or something, but uh, I don't know. I, I think it's... Uh, uh, still, I think the best scenario, I think, if you're in favor of Nomadland winning or the best argument to make for it is if Minari or one of the other ones, uh, sorry, if, if Minari loses SAG Ensemble or if they give Ensemble to Ma Rainey's Defy Bloods or 
to uh, One Night Miami because then we know there's no direct competition. Both Minari and Chicago 7 are hurt uh, statistically and stuff, and their chances of winning Best Picture if they can't even win SAG with three non-picture, non-Best Picture nominees also in the same category. So... Um, so yeah, if, but if you're hoping for an upset, you're hoping for, you know, kind of a last minute turn there, like, uh, like a Moonlight winning Best Picture over La La Land, even after it swept through almost the entire season, uh, then yeah, you're probably rooting for something like Minari or Chicago 7 to win. And I think, again, it is probably one of those two right now to win SAG. Uh, anyways, uh, there were a couple other races I wanted to quickly, uh, uh, brush up on a little bit and just say where I'm, uh, heading right now. Uh, so Best Actress, uh, we'll start with that one here, because I feel like Best Actor and Supporting Actor, they feel pretty solid right now, in all honesty. I think it's really uh, Chadwick Boseman, again, after not getting a nomination for Divide Bloods, it feels like the only place to award him, obviously, is going to be in Best Actor. Uh, and, you know, even though he's the only actor who's not in a Best Picture nominee in that category, I still feel like, you know, that hasn't hurt, like, Allison Janney uh, for I, Tonya and stuff. The film got a bunch of other nominations. I play, uh, I Tanya got two other nominations that year, including another one in an acting category, which also is true for Ma Rainey's. But Ma Rainey's even got into like costumes and makeup and stuff. So, um, so it still it, it fared pretty well, even without screenplay, picture, stuff like that. So and, and yeah, obviously the the everything else with Chadwick as far as the posthumous stuff and all that, uh, yeah, I, I feel like that's going to go. And then Daniel Kaluuya, you know, Judas got into Best Picture and stuff, and it even got another supporting actor nomination for Lakeith Stanfield. So I feel like it's yeah, Daniel Kaluuya is to to lose absolutely uh, as far as uh, supporting actor goes. Then yeah, then you get to the two female races and actress is it's it's questionable right now because I feel like. Um, for me personally, I feel like in the rankings here, Carrie Mulligan's up top because of the uh, Critics' Choice win, and I think she's again. I think she's going to win at SAG. Uh, we'll see because if they really, if SAG, you know, in particular the voting branch, if they're really thinking that No Man Land is the Best Picture winner, um, and they want to give it something the way that La La Land got Best Actress that year, you know, they gave it something at least, you know, then they could give it to Frances McDormand. Uh, she would be, if I rem- am remembering correctly here the first actress to win three individual uh, SAG awards um, that are, like, in a specific category, not including if you're up, you know, like, if you win Best Actor one year and then you win in an ensemble the same year or a different year or something, you know, not counting situations like that. I believe she would be the first, um, unless, uh, you know, and that's not counting the TV side, because uh, I'm sure we've got a lot of repeat winners and stuff over there. But, because um, I know, like, uh, William H. Macy has won a couple times, and Alec Baldwin, Tina Fey, a lot of them... Uh, uh, have won a bunch of times and stuff for for their respective uh, uh, shows and stuff. So as far as the film goes, I, uh, film side goes, I think that would be the first time that's happened. Um, but at the same time, you know, you have Viola Davis, who's in a um, unlike Carrie and unlike Frances, she is in a ensemble nominee uh, nomination, uh, which is as she is the only one, I believe, of the uh, five nominated SAG for that to happen for. The other one who's not at the Oscars here is Amy Adams, who got in over Andre Day at SAG. So, um, yeah, so that's, that could really work out. I think, uh, Viola Davis is, is probably the one who I would say is really in second place there to carry, uh, with Francis being in third. Uh, I would watch out for Vanessa also at SAG, um, because, you know, it is a very, you know, showy performance. Obviously, you know, there's, (laughs) to an extent, a lot of these are showy performances this year in many categories. But uh, that one in particular, and again, you know, if, if the actors are really behind it and they really watch, you know, or are intrigued by the first half hour, even if they shut it off at that point, you know, they'll still say, they'll still walk away with saying what a, a great performance by Vanessa Kirby and stuff. So, um, yeah, Amy Adams, I think, is a distant fifth, unfortunately. Uh, and, yeah, I, well, I shouldn't say, I, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't say unfortunately because I was really not wowed by that performance. But uh, anyways... But still, uh, I think the other four are at least somewhat in play at, at SAG. But again, I would say Carrie has that one uh, probably to win. So then we get to BAFTA. That's when things get interesting in this actress race. Because if Carrie wins SAG and the Critics' Choice, uh, she's you know got more wins than probably anybody else uh, in the category, right? Because Andre Day did win the Globe, you know, in a, a pretty big surprise there. Um, but she's not nominated at BAFTA. She's also not nominated at SAG. Uh, she didn't win at Critics' Choice. So if, you know, that would be, I'm trying to even think the last time we saw somebody win a Globe and then skip everything else and win the Oscar. I mean, you know, Regina King is probably the closest example I can think of, but even she won Critics' Choice, 
because she missed SAG and, and uh, BAFTA that year. Um, let's see. I know, like, people think, like, Marsha Gade Harden for Pollock and stuff. You know, she was only nominated at the Oscars, uh, if I remember right. I think she missed Globes and everything. Like, she was, like, yeah, that rare, rare exception where you miss everything but still win the Oscar. Um, unless I'm, yeah, unless I'm not remembering that correctly, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it, I don't know if it's even ever happened in this particular category where we've seen somebody win the globe and then lose everything else, but then come back to win the Oscar. And even then, of course, the argument that cuts against that is for Andre Day is like Vanessa Kirby, it's the only nomination, it's the only nomination for the film. So it's, it's not very, I don't think very widely, widely, widely seen by the Academy. Um, so yeah, BAFTA, it's like the only two nominees that are up there are, are Francis and, and Vanessa. Right now I have the winner being um, uh, that uh, Bucky Bacre, or uh, however you pronounce her name, from Rocks. I have her winning right now, kind of as Vanessa and, and Francis presumably split votes, you know, uh, being the only two actress uh, nominees here that also correlated the Oscars. So if it does happen to be, for example, let's say uh, the Brits go with a hometown hero, more or less, so to speak, with uh, Vanessa Kirby there. I'll tell you what, it's an odd enough year, I might just be tempted enough to put Vanessa Kirby ahead to win actress. You know, and obviously a lot of that would have to do with my personal feelings, because she is my favorite in this category, um, and stuff. You know, Carrie, I mean, yeah, it's, it's probably, she was uh, definitely in second place there for me, with Francis in third and stuff, but, uh, but still. Um, and yeah, any one of those three, I would say, yeah, great, great performance that goes along the list there. Viola, I mean, I liked her, but I, I don't know if I would say it's like a, a you know outstanding performance. It's not a performance like The Help or the or Fences or uh, stuff like that. You know that that really really stands out, and it's really a big achievement in acting. But um, yeah, and I, I still have to catch up with that United States versus Billy Holiday. So uh, you know, jury's out on that one for me. But man, yeah, maybe Andre Day does uh, d absolutely deserve this. Maybe you know, having not seen that one, but. Uh, but still, between yeah, between those three, it's like if Vanessa does win BAFTA, it's like well, then it's it's not quite the Olivia Coleman thing, but it's like wow, that might just be like a you know we've been talking about like Tilda Swinton, you know when she uh, but she at least if I'm remembering we looked her up before, but I I need to look it up again. Uh, Michael Clayton probably just looking up the article on the film itself is probably a little bit of a quicker path here. Because uh, she won BAFTA, but that was, I, as I recall, the only place that she won uh, that year. Because she was nominated most everywhere, including SAG and uh, Critics' Choice, Globes, um, stuff like that. So yeah, the only place she won was BAFTA. And that was actually the only win for the film, both at BAFTA and the Oscars. So it's like, okay, in a crazy kind of year there, and that was a year, if I'm, if I'm remembering right, almost every award show, there was a different winner for Supporting Actress that year, which almost could be a very same argument for uh, Supporting Actress this year, too. But uh, for example here, okay, let's say, yeah, Kerry won the Critics' Choice, Andre Day won the Globe. If SAG <laughs> happens to go with Frances McDormand, and then BAFTA goes with Vanessa Kirby all of a sudden, as, again, just posing an example here, Man, that's that's the exact same thing. Then maybe it is Vanessa Kirby. You know, and like I said, part of the arg argument, you know, months and months ago when I put her ahead to win Best Actress, was you know it's a very showy performance. You know, I particularly really really enjoyed it. She's also an ingenue. She's been in you know a few other projects that people have you know uh, caught on to and stuff. Uh, most you know TV side of course with The Crown, and then she's been in like the Mission Impossible movies lately and stuff. Um, so she's becoming a more known commodity and stuff. So. You know, and she's right in that, uh, as far as the age goes, I think she's in, like, their late 20s or something, mid-20s, if not. Uh, you know, she's right in that sweet spot where we've seen a lot of ingenues like Brie Larson and Emma, uh, Emma Stone and Jennifer Lawrence and a few others win Best Actress. So she's right in that, that kind of um, zone there, you know, where she might win. So it's like, it's it's possible. I don't want to get too excited about it because I know it's not. It's probably not going to happen, but uh, it probably is carries to lose. I'm, I'm just saying, but... Uh, but yeah, it's really going to be interesting too because um, I think right now I think uh, uh, quite a few Oscar voters uh, that are voting for No Man's Land, I think they're 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 cognizant of uh, the notion that Frances is a producer on the film. Uh, so if it does win picture, she still wins. She doesn't have to. It's not like if she loses Best Actor, she goes home with nothing. So um, I think that's something that people are mindful of. The way they were mindful of. Uh, Last time around, with De Niro not getting into actor, everybody knew he was a producer on The Irishman. So they knew as long as he gets, you know, as Irishman gets into picture, he's going to get nominated. So um, 
so yeah, I, I feel like it's very, very similar track that uh, for Francis. But again, if she wins SAG and then does happen to win BAFTA, then it's it's a compelling argument for her to to win for Nomadland too, at or for sorry if, to win the Oscars as well. Um, and again, uh, she would be with um, even though all three of her wins are in Best Actress, you know, she'd be right up there with Meryl Streep and uh, um, let's see here, Catherine Hepburn won four, so technically behind Cap, uh, Hepburn, but she'd be on that kind of list there. Um, unless the, is there another one that's won three that I can't think of right now? Um, Jeez, I don't know. Um, Ingrid Bergman just had the two, right? Um, I'm pretty sure. Oh, God. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, and that's obviously, that's just in acting. I don't know. There, you know, I think there's uh, like, um, uh, sorry, uh, Emma Thompson, you know, she's one for writing and for acting, for example. So uh, she technically has two Oscars, but um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I think she'd be right up there with Meryl winning, uh, winning three acting prizes and stuff. And then uh, Catherine Hepburn, too. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I just think, and even then, it's like, that almost does feel like it's, you know, maybe for some people that might feel like they're overdoing it for Nomadland, you know, giving it an acting prize, a screenplay prize, director, picture, maybe even cinematography. So if it does end up winning, you know, it, go, it might go five for six. I don't really see it going six for six with uh, with editing there. That feels more like Sound of Metal is more your passion vote there. And even cinematography, I can see uh, Mank winning that one, possibly. Um We'll have to uh, kind of see where the Cinematographers Guild goes with uh, with that one. Um, but hang on, didn't uh, I can't remember now? Did did Mank miss for that Cinematographers one? I know quite a few of them. Uh, there were there were a few surprises I remember for that one. Okay, if I can even find the guild here, here it is. Um, no, Mank Mank is in there. I'm sorry. No, okay. So um, yeah, what was the one? Oh, well, like Tenet, yeah, a couple of those myths that were kind of surprises that morning, I remember. But, uh, but yeah, Mank, yeah, if Mank wins the Cinematographer's Guild, for example, then yeah, then he might be a more, you know, um, uh, see a, a bigger argument for that one to win Cinematography at the Oscars as well. So anyway, so now that we've kind of talked all about that, yeah, I, I still think, even though Promising Young Woman, I think a lot of people are kind of getting maybe potentially behind the idea now. It's like, okay, if it wins for screenplay, that's kind of taking care of it. You know, they can go their own way in Best Actress if they really feel passionate about, like, Andre Day, or if they really feel passionate about Vanessa Kirby or or Viola Davis, you know, one of these that's not in a, a Best Picture uh, nominee. So it's, it's possible, but I... Again, I, I don't, uh, I don't really lend a lot of credence to it right now until we get to uh, SAG, and then we'll see if this whole race takes a big turn. Okay, uh, then for supporting actress, uh, right now for the Oscars, I still have uh, Yu Jun Yun ahead for Minari right now. It does feel like it's in that spot where it's like, okay, it, it probably does win an acting prize, and I think right now, I think that's the only win I have for the film. Uh, so it's like, yeah, six nominations. You know, I, I feel like there's a few... There's a, a couple movies, I think, this year that can go 0 for 6. Um, Judas and the Black Messiah, no, because it'll have supporting actor. Um, let's see, I need to remind myself here. This is the 93rd? No, not 93. Uh, what all got... Because there's like a whole bunch that got six. I need to remind myself, what are all the ones that do have six? <laughs> Okay, the father. Uh, that one maybe goes over six. If it doesn't, if it can't win screenplay or, or uh, uh, something like that, then yeah, that's that's probably the one. I mean, obviously, you know, Anthony Hopkins is still something of a distant possibility for actor. Uh, Olivia Coleman maybe wins for supporting actress, but I, I don't see it winning picture. I don't see it winning the production design or editing prizes. Um, Chicago Seven. Um, yeah, I think other than if it does win for editing over Sound of Metal, possibly, that's the only other one I think that could go 0 for 6. Um, if it loses picture, loses screenplay, loses supporting actor, yeah, I don't really see it winning for its song. I don't see it winning for, um, uh, what was the other one? Cinematography and um, whatever the other one is. Um, yeah, editing, I think we mentioned, yeah. Uh, let's see, otherwise, yeah, I don't see... The rest of them lose. Like, Sound of Metal, I think, at least sound it'll have. Uh, if they want to go with Chicago 7 for editing, for example. Um, Nomadland, yeah, we, we know it's at least got a, at least one or two wins under the belt right now. At least one for Chloe Zhao for director. But, um, yeah, again, probably a couple others there for now. Uh, yeah, so that would be, yeah, yeah, Minari and The Father and possibly Chicago 7 kind of being the other ones that are like, oh, are you going to go for 6 and stuff? And then Mank... 
I mean, other than production design, I think the rest of them it could lose all of them if it's not going to win cinematography. But uh, yeah. So anyway, so this one, it's like, yeah, I think it's uh, Yu Jun Yun right now for Minari. Um, you know, I think uh, she could win possibly at SAG here uh, next weekend. Uh, she is up at BAFTA. Um, so that, it's, I don't know. I, I feel like the more passion votes there, um, or no, do I have her winning there? I can't even remember. <laughs> uh, I haven't looked at my BAFTA predictions in a while, just again, because I'm trying to escape the nightmare. <laughs> uh, but... Um, Anyways, and of course, I'm not saying that just to, I'm not saying that to diss on the actual nominees. I'm just saying just prediction wise, it was an absolute nightmare. Um, anyways, um, I think I have, I have Maria Bakalova ahead right now, but I might need to change that around. Um, let's see. Yeah. Cause Borat didn't get, I don't think anything else over there did it. Not that I remember at least. Uh, and it does, obviously at the Oscars, it does have screenplay. So that it was more of a show of strength there. And it also just won at WGA. So, um, Maria, I think, uh, she just won at, uh, uh, Critics' Choice here a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago now, um, and she's possible at SAG. I wouldn't say it's totally out of the, out of the sales for her at SAG to win. Um, the BAFTA crowd, I don't know. I feel like, even though I've got her head right now, uh, Yu Jun Yun might be, uh, ir- a little too irresistible, or they could go their own way and go somebody else in that category who's not up at the Oscars, too. Um... But again, I'm very mindful of, you know, um, even though, you know, she was nominated everywhere this year, Glenn Close was, except BAFTA, uh, it could be one of those Marsha Gay Hardens where it's the only win through through the season is at the Oscars. You know, it could be one of those. Um, just, again, that's just off of, okay, are Oscar voters really sentimental about the fact that they didn't give it to her a couple of years ago for the wife? Are they really thinking about it that hard, you know, when uh, when the ballots are in their hands? Or are they more impressed with Maria Bakalova? Are they more impressed with Yu Jun Yun, who are names that, you know, a year ago nobody knew who they were. Now, you know, they're not, not maybe not household names, but definitely in the Oscar people's watchers and stuff, They're now they're household names. Now they're people that they know and stuff. Um, or are they more passionate about films like The Father, uh, which is in for picture, and Mank, which is in for picture and stuff? Um, I Right now, I don't think so. I mean... If Olivia, if she was really on track to win this, the BAFTA would have at least put her in, I would think. They, they, the fact that they didn't even go for her, and the, the film otherwise did pretty well across the board there, um, with maybe a couple exceptions. Um, yeah, I, I don't I don't really see that one um, coming back to win here. But uh, yeah, so I, I feel like it is kind of more of a three-way race, if Glenn, you know, and, and with Glenn being the one, you know, uh, we'll see what happens at SAG, too. She did just win for The Wife at SAG, um, which is why I don't think she's ahead to win there. Olivia Coleman will definitely put up a fight there because she has not won an acting prize there um, uh, on the film side. Um, you know, she didn't win for The Favorite, for example, so they could feel an overdue factor. They could give it to her uh, for The Father there. Um, otherwise, the Maria seems you know seems to have a little bit more momentum now because of not only the Critics' Choice win, but also... Borat getting in at the Oscars for screenplay and also now winning WGA. So it feels like overall the industry has at least uh, some support for the film and potentially also for this performance um, and also potentially for the script. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's 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 definitely one that I would be, uh, be saying, okay, if she does win at SAG, that kind of feels like that could almost, uh, almost start to feel like, uh, you know, the kind of final nail kind of thing. You know, it might be game over for Glenn and a few of these other ones here. But again, it really depends on where those uh, Oscar voters, how they're going to feel when they have the ballots in their hand. Are they going to go sympathetic with a movie like Hillbilly Elegy, which got a, a makeup nomination but otherwise didn't impress them? Even though, you know, I, I I still like the performance enough to say, okay, you know, you can probably throw it in the bunch here and say it's a worthy nomination for me, you know, this year. But, uh, yeah, even though, again, I wasn't, you know... I, I wouldn't name that performance, especially way high up on the list of accomplishments for Glenn Close. <laughs> uh, I mean, can 101 Dalmatians maybe be ranked higher? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, maybe. But um, I don't know. I, that's a, I have to watch that movie again. 25 years old this year. Shit, that makes me feel like a old man. All right. Um, let's see. Yeah, briefly, we'll talk about the screenplay prizes. Then we'll probably be uh, we'll be uh, probably done here for a little while. Then we'll. Uh, We'll come back here because we've got uh, Screen Actors Guild coming up here this uh, coming weekend. Uh, DGA, I think, will be right about the, if not the same weekend, I think it's actually the next weekend. Um, The 10th, I think. It's that Saturday. So it's almost a full week after uh, SAG there. Um, 
and then I believe, if I'm remembering right, BAFTA is the next day on the 11th, and then the Oscars, I thought they were the 18th, but I think they're actually the 25th. Yeah, they're the, they're the 25th, with um, BAFTA, oh, wait, are, are BAFTAs on the 11th? Uh, maybe I got those backwards here, because I know SAG is like the first week of April, right? <laughs> maybe I had everything backwards all this time. Um, I thought... I don't know. I'll have to look up when, when SAG is here again because maybe they switched the dates on me or something. I didn't know. Um, awards. Yeah, let me see. What, maybe I got my dates mixed up a little bit here. 27th is the one we're on. They are presented April 4th. Okay, I thought that was... Yeah, that's the first Sunday Yeah, in April. So that's... Yeah, that's a week um, week from this Sunday, in other words. Okay, so that one is, is correct. So... Um, yeah, so BAFTA's the week after. I thought the Oscars were the week after that, but no, it's it's a two-week stretch between uh, BAFTAs and Oscars there. Um, let's see. Otherwise, yeah, the rest of the guilds will kind of trickle in in between here. DGA, yep, is that Saturday. Uh, you got the Art Directors Guild the same day. Um, the week after is the uh, Audio uh, Guild uh, Guilds. Um, Cinematographers Guild, Costume Designers Guild is in the middle of the week there. Uh, the Makeup Guild will be the day before uh, SAG. And then I think the um, Visual Effects Guild is also uh, in the week after SAG, in between that and BAFTA and, and DGA and stuff. So a lot of these guilds will, will trickle in with their winners here in the coming, uh, coming weeks. So, um, yeah, so let's uh, go back here. So Screenplay... Yeah, we'll, we'll probably, that's what I was trying to talk about. The next, yeah, when the next video is. Uh, probably we're looking at uh, a preview of, of SAG next. Um, yeah, I would say probably just a final predictions video for that. So that'll be on, I don't know if it'll be the Saturday before, but, you know, maybe the Friday before or something, uh, maybe. Uh, well, I don't know. Actually, that's Easter weekend, too, if I remember right. I think Easter is that Sunday. Yeah, it's the same day as Easter, so... I don't know, I might be home that weekend. Maybe I won't have time to sit down and do it then. I might have to do it Thursday or something, so... All right. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll plan ahead there anyways. But um, talk about the screenplay prizes again real quick. Um, I do feel like, yeah, with the uh, WGA and, and the Critics' Choice win, Promising Young Woman does feel like it is now ahead to win that race. It's a way to personally award Emerald Fennel, who, other than um, Lee Isaac Chung, is the only one up here uh, as a writer who's also up for director... Aaron Sorkin couldn't get in and stuff, so um, I don't. I don't mean to. <laughs> I, I don't say that in a bragging way, of course, you know. But uh, but still, you know, uh, kind of surprising that he got in, you know, DGA and almost everywhere else, and, and still couldn't get that Oscar nomination. Uh, but um, yeah, again, I'd be wary of Minari uh, here in the in the next uh, couple weeks. If it does start to pick up traction, then watch out. You know, that one that one could be the one to upset the apple cart there. And then yeah, adapted. I feel like there is maybe a small glimmer of hope for something like One Night in Miami, but uh, I don't know. If it couldn't even win a WGA, I feel like that one, you know, missing the picture nomination, director, um, you know, a few other categories that it could have possibly gotten into, like some of the other texts and stuff. Yeah, I, I feel like that one's probably getting further and further away from a win. Uh, so that really, yeah, does bring it down to the father of Nomadland. Um and yeah, Nomadland, you know, winning screenplay at uh, Critics' Choice, you know, is definitely a sign that it's ahead there. Um, you know, winning at PGA, you know, again, that Oscar, you know, the lineup between picture and director and stuff, uh, possible as well. Um, so, yeah, I have Nomadland to win right now, but I think, again, The Father is really close there. Uh, BAFTA, I believe they're both nominated. <laughs> I think they both got in at BAFTA, <laughs> if I remember right, for this particular screenplay prize. So that will be interesting to see a more, you know, British, you know, uh, production there with uh, with that one, to see that one go up against Nomadland, where I think, I, I think last time I checked, I had the father ahead to win there for Adapted at BAFTA, and I still do. Yes, good. <laughs> I do have, uh, oh, I have Promising Woman in second place against Chicago 7. I better change that one real quick <laughs> before that one gets too far away from me there. All right. Um, but yeah, BAFTA will be interesting there because they're right before Oscar voting and stuff. Um you know, and The Father was one I felt like kind of early on, kind of, you know, just uh, one more connection to Jojo Rabbit there from last year. I remember early on in the race, I was thinking Jojo, you know, might win screenplay there. But um, yeah, then it started losing to other stuff through the season there. And then it won at uh, WGA. So I was like, okay, now it feels like I can get on track. Then it won a BAFTA. And then it had the, you know, that those two going together pretty close to the end of Oscar voting, you know, kind of sealed the deal there. 
Um, so like if the father, if it does, you know, it's, you know, it wasn't eligible at WGA, so it's not going to quite have that same trajectory, but if it wins at BAFTA, maybe gets a little bit more support over there than we're thinking if Anthony Hopkins wins or something, you know, maybe then the Oscar voters feel like, well, we got to give it something now. So maybe, you know, or it gets more on their radar again, you know, stuff like that. And even then, I think there is still, uh, even though I think of the six films that are up for six nominations, other than Chicago seven, I think it's the most likely, to go home empty-handed. I would even say it's uh, maybe more primed to go home empty-handed than Chicago 7 is. Um, you know, uh, they're still, you know, getting that many nominations. It's still, I, I think, a film, the uh, General Academy, if they didn't love it, love it, they liked it a lot. I mean, it got into production design as a pretty, as I understand it, contemporary film, and it's in for editing, and, you know, it doesn't on the surface seem to be a very flashy, edity, uh, you know, type film, you know uh you know stuff like that so um so yeah i i, I think it's it's one that um you know it, it's it's got to win something so i might push it ahead back again for uh adapt screenplay after bafta and stuff or maybe even before then so I, again i think it's really really close there and it's a, you know an argument i was making at the globes was you know florian zeller was the only one not nominated in that category and um obviously that's not true this time for adapt in particular in, in the adapted prize but um yeah i think you know he's actually you know nomadland's the only one up for director and picture in the same category um so if yeah florian zeller i had i threw him in the last minute there for director it didn't quite happen but it's like if the academy was impressed enough by his directorial job that he was like number six or number seven on that list or something uh possibly um or if just generally enough people like it it's like you know it's like hey let's give him something let's give him that you know kind of the way possibly this is and maybe another correlation is the way that um uh uh taika waititi did not get into director last year for jojo rabbit even though again i threw him in last minute um you know uh yeah maybe that was a way to also say hey you know we really do like you we didn't put you in director but here here's a consolation prize so that that could that narrative could definitely uh jump up for florian zeller for um uh nomadland or sorry for, against nomadland i should say and against that particular uh, category there so anyways, yeah, and I think another, uh, just really quick in closing here, I think a lot of people have also started to um, uh, kind of uh, submit to the idea that, you know, if it is Nomadland, you know, that wins everything this year, it's like, oh, you know, finally, you know, we get another, um, or, you know, for the first time in, in arguably a decade, we get an easy Oscar race for who's going to win Best Picture. Um, you know, and I feel like, yeah, maybe it's, maybe we are very, 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 very much overdue for that. Because if you look back, you know, Argo, it was, you know, a lot of people had Argo by the end, but it was still a, kind of a tricky thing because it didn't have the director nomination and stuff. Uh, 12 Years a Slave, there was some question about because Gravity was still a strong comp uh, contender there. Birdman was tricky because Boyhood had a lot of early wins. Spotlight was a tricky one because The Revenant got so much steam. Uh, toward the end, La La Land, of course, ended up being a real trick, you know, kind of uh, <laughs> uh, trickster on us there with uh, Moonlight winning there. Shape of Water, that was kind of a tricky year because Get Out and Three Billboards had a lot of momentum. Green Book was kind of tricky because Roma was the projected front runner, and then Green Book, even though it had PGA and Globe and stuff, yeah, we probably should have seen that one more. And then Parasite last year, I mean, 1917 was the favorite going into the race. You still had some people saying... Um, uh, some other films were uh, were competing there, like myself. I was thinking uh, I wouldn't have been totally blown out of my seat if um, you know either JoJo or uh, uh, even uh, One Night uh, or sorry, One Night One Night in Miami. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood had had come back to win. Uh, you know, it wasn't very likely, but I was definitely thinking. You know, 1917. I was like, I'm not sensing that one, so I went Parasite. I happened to get that one right. First time I had it right in a long, long time since uh, since Birdman. So. It's like, yeah, all those years, it's like, yeah, are we really due for one? It's like, yeah, I think we're due for one. But it's like maybe the closer, like La La Land, the closer we think, okay, it's just an easy race this year, the further away we get from it actually being the case. So just keep, just, you know, we're, you know food for thought there as we, as we go into the last few weeks here before um, uh, almost a month, almost a full month now. Um, or actually, it is a full month. Yeah, we are one full month away from the Oscars today. I didn't even recognize that till right now. Huh. That's me, but, uh, but still, as we're we're going into the final month now, yeah, we'll we'll see. Um, and what, yeah, it does feel like a super long year because um, you know I was like all the other kind of some of the dingbats out there. I started predicting stuff clear back in um, uh, September last year. Um, so, 
yeah, even though, yeah, we had a weird year, of course. Um, yeah, so it, it'll be interesting, you know, if, if everything gets back on track. Um, I mean, I'll just to step away from everything for a minute here. If everything does get back on track and we all of a sudden kind of have a, you know, less in the calendar year sense, an Oscar race, you know, because it will only be films that came out in March on, you know, March to December, if everything holds true and stuff. Um, possibly, you know, that that's going to be a really short season because it's <laughs> off season, I should say, because it's like, okay, at the, you know, it's like literally the last Sunday in April is when the Oscars are. So then it's like May, June, July, August. Uh, oh, then we're back to predicting Oscars again by September. So it'll it'll be like four months off instead of uh, six months off, like we're usually used to, or five and a half, depending on when the Oscars are. So, um, and even then, you know, Gold Derby or some of the other sites, IndieWire, they start putting stuff up in mid-August. So, or sometimes even early August. So... It's, I don't know, it's it's going to be weird, of course, you know, and, you know, uh, just side note, I, we talked about it once about the Black Widow thing, you know, now, now Disney's like, yep, we're putting it on Disney Plus for 30 bucks, but we're also going to put it out, we're postponing it to July, which I was like, oh, damn it, <laughs> I'm like, come on, guys, come on, I mean, <laughs> I don't know, I mean, I, again, right now I'm in Iowa, and it's like, for the most part, our numbers have been, you know, we haven't been over a thousand cases a day for a long, long time, at least by the metrics I watch, so it's like, yeah, it feels like, you know, generally speaking, we're definitely on the downward trend here. And as, as generally cases are uh, still, they're kind of flatlining right now. They're not continuing to, you know, decrease right now, um, just generally speaking. But it's like, yeah, now we're seeing, you know, the box office uh, at the mo- for the movies and stuff slowly start to go back up again. You know, this last weekend was, was a pretty good sign with a lot of films having smaller drops. The Courier opened a little bit higher than expected. Um See, what do we got out this weekend? No, uh, nobody. The um, uh, uh, Bob Odenkirk vehicle, action vehicle. You know, which again, a year ago, everybody would have been scoffing at that. But uh, I don't know. I mean, it looks decently entertaining. I mean, I'm not a big John Wick type, you know, movie fan and stuff. I don't really go for the Liam Neeson ones, the Takens and the clones of Taken and all that. I don't really go for those. So this one, I'm not really going to jump out of my way to go see it, but. It's like, okay, so that's out this weekend. So we'll see if maybe that one eh, has the possibility to overperform. Um, and then the weekend after that is like, okay, that's uh, when Godzilla vs. King Kong comes out. Even though it's coming out, I believe, in the middle of the week, like a Wednesday or something, it actually comes out. Um, if that one takes off and it does higher than Tom and Jerry, if it's a $20 million opening with more markets open now, that you know that, that's the test. That's the real test for, okay, how strong is the market now? for uh you know for big tent pole type movies like that because if yeah i think if godzilla king kong if it crosses that 18 19 20 million dollar mark then we might see possibly and especially we'll see how vaccinations and stuff go over over april and stuff then we might see disney and a couple other ones really you know kind of kicking themselves you know a little bit about that like oh we should have stuck with that may date and stuff and now we've seen uh, actually since then we've seen uh the sp- I think it's just called Spiral, the uh, Saw spinoff movie with Chris Rock and um, it's Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson, if I remember right. Um, that one uh, moved up to uh, May 14th. So that's because um, I was thinking we were going to get a regular summer movie season again if, if uh, Black Widow stayed on that date and stuff. And I, I'm I'm fine with them still saying, OK, 30 bucks on Disney Plus, because, I mean, generally speaking, even if it does open to 30, 40 million uh, with the budgets that Marvel movies have nowadays, of course, you know, and, and a lot of worldwide markets still pretty shuttered. Yeah, it, it's going to be tough for that movie to actually break even, you know. Tenet somehow managed to come close, if not do it. I, I haven't seen the final numbers on that yet. Um, and actually, in some New York and L.A. theaters, it's still playing. But um, just because they've just recently reopened and stuff. But uh, as far as I know, it didn't cross the line to make money for Warner Brothers. Um and stuff like that. So uh, obviously, Black Widow, I don't think is primed to do that either. Uh, it's a little less expensive if I if I saw the the numbers there correctly than uh, than Tenet was. But yeah, I don't. I mean, many European markets I don't think are going to be opening in May, or they're they're really going to be looking at probably late May, early June. If you know, if uh, for example, just you know, uh, the Johnson Johnson vaccine, for example, I think that one, if it goes through the U.S. fine, then yeah, they'll start shipping it offshore is more so than they're doing right now, and that becomes kind of the dominant vaccine across the uh, across the globe. Uh, obviously, I don't keep up with this stuff twenty four seven, so I don't know. Maybe I'm totally wrong there, but. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I feel like, yeah, once, you know, we, we get that test out, uh, not this weekend, but the next weekend, 
uh, for uh, Godzilla vs. King Kong. But again, keeping in mind that it does come out Wednesday, so we'll see what the numbers look like there. And and uh, Warner Brothers also does not release their numbers until Sunday morning, uh, sometimes Sunday afternoon at the latest. Um, that will be the big test. Um, you know, obviously how critics feel about it and stuff might tamper some of the expectations, but generally speaking, I think there's there's people that are excited about it, and it'll be, again, that kind of first big tentpole movie out there, uh, arguably, and if you don't count the Raya and the Dragon thing Disney put out. Other than that, yeah, it's the biggest tentpole film we've seen since arguably Tenet, um, not counting, like, Wonder Woman and stuff out over the Christmas weekend, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, so that's my spiel for now. Yeah, so what do we know about the Oscars? Uh, maybe less than we think we know, but, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to watch here over the next month to, to see what happens.